This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on 39 Dunedin News, millions of dollars is earmarked for road and cycleway improvements through the central city. Old bones are providing clues as to the history of local wildlife, including a particular species of penguin. And changes in store for Portobello Road, although not all the details have been confirmed. Good evening, Dunedin. I'm Rebecca Dupree. Up to $10 million will be spent on making the city's one-way system safer for cyclists. The New Zealand Transport Agency has announced plans to establish separate raised cycle lanes from North Dunedin through the central city. And fingers are crossed that will keep all road users out of harm's way. Planning a safer system, a project to physically separate cyclists from traffic on State Highway 1 through the city is entering the design phase. It follows a lengthy planning process. The initial catalyst for it, we had uh, cycle fatalities in 2011 and 2012, uh, and there were two further cycle fatalities a few years before that. So that really highlighted the need that the one-way system, it has been used for cycling, but it's not safe for cycling. And so that really created the demand that we needed to do something. Following those fatalities, local leaders challenged the New Zealand Transport Agency to come up with an improved road design. Several short-term solutions were implemented, including the widening of existing cycle lanes. Now the plan is to further separate cyclists and motorists by installing new raised lanes. The big difference between what we've got now and where we want to head, it's, it's a, bit, a little bit like looking at pedestrians. For pedestrians, there's footpaths on either side, there's curbs, keep people separate from the, the moving traffic. At traffic lights, there are separate phasing for pedestrians. It's kind of like that, but for cycling, because at the moment cyclists, they only have white lines. He's confident new lanes will reduce the potential for motorists to make simple mistakes, in turn decreasing the likelihood of fatal accidents. The work's estimated to cost between 5 and $10 million and has already garnered a lot of attention. The main consultation process behind the schemes was back in 2013 and 14. Um, we actually fielded over 2,000 written submissions on that and through the various polls there were another 3,000 points of view. So it's quite a substantial exercise that was done back then. The design phase is expected to take up to nine months as planners work through any perceived issues. It's hoped work will be tendered by the end of the year. Ruby McAndrew, 39, Dunedin News. Hundreds of residents gathered in the Dunedin Centre last night to learn more about the arrival of Syrian refugees. The information and planning session attracted a crowd of almost 300 people. Mayor Dave Cull spoke alongside representatives from Red Cross and Immigration New Zealand. They also spent time answering questions from the public. An Ethiopian refugee was part of the panel, sharing his experience of resettling in New Zealand. Several residents took the opportunity to speak about their concerns during the two-hour meeting. About 45 refugees are due to arrive in Dunedin in April and dozens more later in the year. Ancient bone analysis is helping to shed light on the history of local wildlife. An international research team led by the University of Otago has pinpointed the arrival of a penguin species and the study is set to make an impression on present day conservation efforts. Looking back tens of thousands of years, this University of Otago researcher has spent the last few years analysing the remains of more than a hundred little penguins. Her interest in the topic was piqued by recent findings about the origins of other local animals. There's been some research going on about yellow-eyed penguins and New Zealand sea lions that discovered that these species, or a mainland lineage of these species, went extinct after human arrival and then were replaced by what we see here today. Um, we thought that this might be the case as well for the Australian little penguins in Otago, so we just wanted to know um, when they came over. She and other researchers pulled over hundreds of penguin bones, some dating back more than 30,000 years, to pinpoint exactly when the new species arrived in New Zealand. They pieced together a timeline after extracting DNA from the ancient remains. Any of the bones that were from before 1600, about that time, um, were uh, assigned to the New Zealand lineage of the little penguins, or now we can call them species. Um, and um, everything that we find here now is Australian. 
So um, there was a very clear shift or a very clear turnover. Dr Grosser looked at several little penguin sites around the country, but her research was primarily focused on the Otago coast. She says the benefits of the discovery could be far-reaching. We previously thought this is all one species and now we have two species of little penguin. And um, these populations here on the Otago coast are one of the few populations of little penguins in New Zealand that are thriving. But now we know this is not the actual New Zealand little penguin, so we have to figure out what's going on with New Zealand penguins in other parts of the country. She's now finished her PhD research and is hoping someone else will pick up where she left off. Further studies could help to better establish the history of the little penguin population in Otago. Ruby McAndrew, 39, Dunedin News. Dunedin is a finalist in national awards aimed at recognising people's favourite places to cycle. There are four categories and Dunedin is in line to win the on-road section. The city surrounds, including Otago Peninsula, is up against four other spots, including Christchurch's Port Hills. Kiwis are being asked to vote for their favourite cycling locations online throughout February, which is Bikewise Month. The awards are run each year by the New Zealand Transport Agency, with winners due to be announced on the 3rd of March. A section of Portobello Road is being made safer after risks, risks were identified through an audit. The work is expected to cost more than half a million dollars and should be completed in winter. But with the project up for tender, some details have yet to be ironed out. Surveying a tricky piece of Dunedin's roading network, this confusing section of Portobello Road is due to be redeveloped, making it safer and easier to use. These concrete strips will no longer exist, the service lane disappears and what we have is a slightly wider road provided here where we've got the two lanes, we've got a median strip in the middle, we've got parking and we've got a separated bicycle facility. The council's been trying to improve this patch between Portsmouth Drive and Timaru Street for several years. Some residents and businesses are unhappy with the layout and risks were identified through a routine safety audit. The issues that come out of here was very significantly at the Timaru Street end here is how the cyclists leaving the cycleway would, would merge in with the traffic coming through, how the people in the service lane came through and how the uh, residents parking could come out and how everything matched and fitted together at the Timaru Street intersection. So there were significant safety concerns. The council spent roughly $70,000 commissioning the new road design. There's more parking, more options for residents and a shared path for cyclists and pedestrians. It's expected to cost more than half a million dollars, but the council feels it's worth the hefty price tag. Well, the real test of this is going to be that people are going to say, this is easy to use. It's clear, it's safe and um, it works well. That's the plan. This is part of the Council's South Dunedin cycle network, which has had some expensive teething problems. But staff have little option other than to pay the price for an end result that's preferable for all. Rosie Mannins, 39 Dunedin News. Still to come on 39 Daneta News, we take a look at some of the technology initiatives that have resulted from the Gigatown competition. And local artists are adding their personal touches to chorus equipment, but are they allowed? We at Alex Campbell's have got far too many shirts. We've got buy one, get one free at the moment on all shirts. Business shirts, short sleeve shirts, you name it. Buy one, get one free. 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 Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. Chiropractic care is a drug-free way of sorting out stress and pain by getting your spine in line with body and brain. At Mosgiel Chiropractic and Wellbeing, we provide family chiropractic care. Feel taller, lighter and brighter. Call Mosgiel Chiropractic and Wellbeing today, 484-7272.
Don't suffer in silence. Call Sunny Chin, Chi Master Body Technician for Structural Muscular Emotional Body Work. Phone 03 606 for all your pain relief. The team at Caltex North care more about you than just putting fuel in your tank. They care about you and your family. At the Caltex Valley Workshop, the skilled service team care about your safety, extending the life of your car, and helping you live more economically. There's a range of modern equipment to give comprehensive warrant of fitness checks and servicing to your vehicle. Come visit your only local in Northeast Valley and receive 10% off when you book your warrant and service together. That's your friendly Caltex Valley Workshop, 134 North Road, or book online at caltexvalley.co.nz. It has no arms, no legs, has a drill in its mouth up to eight hours a day and still never complains. It's one of 72 mannequin torsos in our new $3.8 million dental simulation lab. The first and only facility of its kind in New Zealand. My name is Nikki Rose Coltolaro and this is my place in the world. Take your place in the world. Mobility Scooters of Targo. Mobility Scooters, new and used, electric manual wheelchairs, strollers and walkers, free home demonstration and delivery. Call Tony on 03 455 2875 or visit our showroom, 211 King Edward Street, opposite Westpac. Bring some more joy into your world by adopting one of our adult animals at SPCA Otago. Call now on 473-8252. Please adopt a pet now, they will love you forever. The good all, it's all about our customer care, great food, great coffee, and supported by some awesome staff. We think it's really important that the customers when they come in here have a good experience and leave wanting to come back. And I think in a nutshell, that's what the good all is all about. Are you looking to add a new dimension to your home? A Christie's glass house and shed will add value to your property and increase your gardening pleasure. And can be easily ventilated during the day. A Christie's Garden Shed is a brilliant addition to your backyard, adding to your storage capacity. The great Kiwi Glass House and Shed come in all shapes and sizes, are manufactured in Dunedin, and come in a range of nature-inspired colour steel colours or metallic zinc alum finish. Choose the Kiwi Shed that has stood the test of time. Choose Christie. Hello, I'm Dougal Stevenson. Welcome to Museum Diaries, the program where we delve deeper into the museum vaults. So this week, Greek ceramics, the Otago Shag, yes we do have one. Early hominid stone tools and what they meant to early civilization and what they mean to us. And you'll love this, Thomas Jeffrey Parker's glycerin stomachs. Welcome back. Fewer houses are being put on the market throughout New Zealand, but they're selling for more money. The latest data shows an almost 15% drop in new listings nationwide compared to a year ago. But record asking prices are being seen in many areas, including central Otago, where the average listing is just over $860,000. That's the highest in the country, up almost 5% in the last month. In Dunedin, the average selling price is a little more than $300,000. And on that note, let's take a look at today's markets. The NZX50 has closed the day down 47 points. It's now at 6,133. The Dow Jones is down 296 points. And to the exchange rate, the Kiwi dollar is up against all the currencies we follow. A range of technology-based initiatives are taking off as a result of Dunedin winning the National Gigatown competition. It's all being run under the umbrella organisation Gig City and project coordinator Leslie Marriott is here to tell us more. Good evening. Hi. How is Gig City operating? Well, it's a, it's a, um, a collaborative approach with the, um, the Gig City Community Trust and the Dunedin City Council. Um, both of whom are working together to bring the plan for success into fruition. Tell us about your responsibilities as project coordinator. <laughs> well, my, my responsibilities are essentially managing the Digital Community Trust um, and also liaising back into the Dunedin City Council. Um, <clears throat> I get to uh, look after bringing a lot of the projects to life. What are some of the projects that people are bringing to life through Gig City? Well, <laughs> There's a, there's a number of projects actually around the city that are currently happening. 
Um, one, for example, which the, the viewers can probably identify with is um, the, the um, project which the St Barnabas Trust is, has um, got some funding for, which is the development of an app which is um, to help them to draw, drive the efficiencies of their Meals on Wheels program. So that's just one example, but there's a whole lot of, of others. So mm. I'll just keep it, <laughs> keep it sort of small and short for you. The funding is available. Tell us about that. Yep. So as part of the, um, the Gig City win, the, the city was given um, $700,000 in funding and um, 200,000 of that is actually towards um, gig startup or, or startup fund and 500,000 of it was for the, um, the gig city community fund. Mm -hmm. So both of, those, um, both of those have actually been active already with funding rounds. Um, um, let me think. Altogether, they've actually handed out um, $177,000, mm -hmm. of which um, $107,000 has, has gone through the, um, the startup fund, and they've had two rounds of, of funding already go through. Um, the Gig City Community Fund has handed out oh, 70000 rather, 70000 after one round, um, and we're looking towards having new rounds of funding um, coming through in March. Mm. What is the overall vision for Gig City in Dunedin? Well, the overall vision is, is to provide people living here in Dunedin with the opportunity to um, reach out to the world in ways that we haven't previously been able to. So for those people who are viewing at home, um, it's, it's how they might engage with family who, is over, who are overseas. It could, be, um, it could be just in downloading their movies. Ultimately, the, the experience or how they're going to use it is going to be entirely down to them in their own unique way. Just as we are all very individual, what happens in the home is going to be quite unique mm -hmm. as well, isn't it? Um, from a business perspective, there's the opportunity for businesses to actually take their take their companies to um, an international communications platform um, that's quite reliable, um, and also it will give them the opportunity perhaps to drive efficiencies within within their companies. Gig City Project Coordinator Leslie Marriott, thank you very much for your time. Thanks. After the break on 39 Dunedin News, some of the city's unnoticed features begin to stand out. And we're on the streets to see how you feel about more Aucklanders living here. Do you want support for your breathing? You are not alone. In New Zealand, over 600,000 people have some form of breathing difficulty, especially with the high pollen season in New Zealand. Puff Plus is an excellent natural product developed to support lung function and breathing difficulties. Puff Plus is so effective, you get a no questions asked, money back guarantee on the first purchase. Give it a go, you have nothing to lose. Call now, 0800 502 402. Take as directed. If symptoms persist, see your healthcare professional. Pallet fires are growing in popularity in Otago, with people who want a clean and efficient form of home heating. The sight of a burning flame without the problems of chopping, stacking and carting wood around is a winner. Pallet fires, so easy, so efficient. Sunny chin, neck, shoulder, back, sciatica, pain specialists, innovative tools specifically designed to contour your grooves of depletion and excess muscle buildup. Sunny chin, it works. Bring some more joy into your world by adopting one of our adult animals at SPCA Otago. Call now on 4738252. Please adopt a pet now, they will love you forever. Don't miss the home show. Lots of great ideas, great prizes, great deals. Kitchens, bathrooms, furnishings and lots more. The Edgar Centre Moor FM Arena, 4th, 5th, 6th of March. Adults $10, children free. See you at the home show. Grandad loved his family and surfing in that order. He taught me to surf and we spent a lot of time in the water together over the years. When he died, I strapped the camera to the nose of his old board and filmed the paddle out at St. Clair. Gillian's played the video on the big screen at his funeral. Grandad would have loved having everyone come out one last surf for them. Gillian's Funeral Services, helping families celebrate the lives of their loved ones for generations. Gillian's.co.nz 
Mosgiel Mowers Plus can help you with products to make your garden maintenance jobs easier. Lawn mowers, ride-ons, chainsaws, line trimmers. Sales and service are our specialty. Mosgiel Mowers Plus. Phone 489-3572-22B Gordon Road, Mosgiel. Pregnant, need to talk, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Pregnancy counselling services are here to help. It's free, it's confidential. Call us now on 0800 773 462. We're Alex Campbell's, we've got far too many shirts. We've got buy one, get one free at the moment on all shirts. Business shirts, short sleeve shirts, you name it. Buy one, get one free. 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 Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Welcome back. The total fire ban has been lifted for coastal parts of Otago, but some restrictions remain. People wanting to light fires in the open must get a permit from the Otago Rural Fire Authority. A blanket ban remains in force across central Otago and the Lakes District. In Dunedin and down the Clutha coast, people can now use gas cookers and barbecues without permits. F permanent fireplaces can also be lit within the coastal zone. Local artists are taking to the streets in an effort to beautify some of the city's unnoticed features. The Dunedin City Council and Chorus have commissioned artists to paint electrical cabinets around town. And some are getting a personal touch. Working with an unconventional canvas, this local artist is putting her brushes to use for a city council initiative to spruce up electrical boxes around Dunedin. Well, I'm painting one of the chorus boxes today, well, for several days probably, and the theme is about the midwinter swim at St Clair. Bellamy put in a proposal to paint one of the chorus boxes and received a St Clair location that fit perfectly with her beach-themed idea. There's a midwinter swim at the beach every year which inspired her design. She's not totally unfamiliar to the idea of cabinet painting as it runs in the family. My son Max and has done a couple and in Bacargill and one here so that kind of inspired me to do it too. I just think they're beautiful. The cabinet art project organised by the City Council and Chorus is about adding colour and life to the city. This is just one of nine boxes scheduled to be painted in coming weeks after the first round of work proved successful. Bellamy says getting the opportunity to extend her work to a public place is a great feeling. Oh, it's something I've been doing all my life. I'm 65, so it's, it's been a long, a long time, but it's still fun, and I just really enjoy doing stuff like this too. Bellamy's planning to complete her St Clair cabinet early next week. Annabelle Dick, 39, Dunedin News. The City Council is using independent commissioners from out of town to hear submissions on the proposed new district plan. Two experts from Nelson and Banks Peninsula have been appointed to the hearings panel. They're due to consider all information and submissions presented on the second generation plan. Four councillors are also on the committee, which will begin the hearings process in late April. The council is not saying how much it'll cost to have commissioners from outside the city involved. They've both got...